Good morning. You're listening to FloorDaily.net, and I'm Kemp Parr. This morning, my guest is Dr. Chad Mutre, who is the economist with the National Association of Manufacturing. Chad, how you doing? Great. How have you been? I'm good. It's been a couple of years since we've talked. I think it yep. was in July of 11, and we actually talked about some things that were going on then that led to the sequestration legislation. So here we are back at it again, right? Yeah, things never change, especially here in Washington. As an economist, you probably had an outlook for what the second half of 2013 was going to look like prior to these government issues. What was that outlook? Before I talk about the outlook, I'm going to do a quick little snapshot of what we've seen really over the last year or so. Okay. And you, you kind of foreshadowed that a little bit by talking about the fiscal cliff issues that we were having last year as well as sequestration, et cetera. But really over the last year, a little over a year, we've really seen a a little bit of a slowdown overall in terms of manufacturing activity. So certainly, you know, coming out of the recession, manufacturing was really, you know, hopping, and there was certainly a rebound component there. But, But, you know, we also continued hearing this conversation about the manufacturing renaissance. So you definitely were seeing that in 2011 and in 2010. But last year, with all of the talk about the fiscal cliff, sequestration, and with the slowing global economy, we actually saw manufacturing production really slow down pretty significantly. In fact, from about the middle of last year to around July or so of this year, overall production slow, we've seen hiring slow, as well as our overall manufactured goods exports uh, slow in a real way. And so I think that that really has led to some of the slowness that we've seen, particularly over the spring months. Now, with that said, now I'll we'll get to the second half of the year comment. We actually have seen a little bit of a pickup as we got into July, August, September in manufacturing activity. So whether you're looking at industrial production or even a little bit of with exports and, and definitely with, when you look at sentiment surveys, there definitely has been a pickup in, in new orders and in production that is, is notable. And in fact, so many, many manufacturers actually are cautiously optimistic, not just about the second half of this year, but also with regard to 2014. So there still is quite a bit of cautious optimism that their sales are going to be picking up. The one lagging indicator continues to be hiring, and I think that that's going to be an area where we, we are seeing some growth in hiring, but not quite where we'd like to see it. I find some of your comments interesting because I don't touch and track a lot of the different components that you, you look at, but I, I do track automotive, and automotive has been doing very strongly. I think August was probably the strongest report for several years, right? You're right. In fact, autos continue to be one of the huge bright spots for the manufacturing sector. It's really when you take autos or anything in the transportation sector out of the analysis, where you start seeing some broader weaknesses beyond the transportation sector. So I think you hit your nail on the head pretty pretty, pretty uh, succinctly there, that I think autos continues to be a bright spot. It's going to be a bright spot moving into 2014 even, but it's, it's those broader measures of manufacturing where we're continuing to see some softness. Since we're in the flooring business, we look at housing pretty yeah. closely, and housing also has been doing fairly well this year. Yeah, housing has continued to be a bright spot overall, although I think the one thing to talk about with, when you talk about housing is interest rates. And we've seen you know 30-year mortgage rates go up a full percentage point since the beginning of May. My basic sense is that you know, you're seeing a little bit of a sticker shock with regard to those hiring borrowing costs, and, and that's led to a little bit of, of a flatness overall in housing in, in some of the more recent figures. But I think as Americans start internalizing those new realities of what mortgage rates are, I think that there'll be a realization that, that we still are at historic lows, and I think that housing will continue to pick up as we get into the end of this year and beginning of next year. It's just people have to come to grips, I guess, with the fact that now mortgage rates are 4.5% and it could certainly go up to 5% by the beginning of the year. Yeah, now you've got this curveball with the government starting in October that may go through most of this month, or at least to the middle of it. So what effect is this going to have? Is this going to slow down this trend you've been seeing? Well, I think manufacturers in general and businesses in general don't like uncertainty, and I think that this is the granddaddy of all of it. Yeah. As we approach next week's debt ceiling limit, I think that there's going to be a lot of nervousness in, in the business community. From the manufacturer's perspective, we want government back to work, and we want to, to, to move beyond these short-term political challenges. I think that Washington really needs to start focusing on the long-term issues and pro-growth measures that we kind of expect from them. And I think once you start looking at, you know, reforming the tax code, dealing with entitlements, you know, opening up trade markets, finding qualified workers for our factories. I think that, you know, those are the measures that we think Washington needs to be looking at instead of this short-term fiscal impasse that we currently are in. And, and you're right, it's going to definitely impact 
fourth quarter GDP, probably subtracting uh, you know, a few tenths of a percentage point off of uh, whatever estimate we already had for the for the fourth quarter. What is that estimate? Well, I had been saying roughly around a few and a half percent growth for the fourth quarter. That's probably going to fall to probably around two percent now. I would I would I would guess. Yeah. Overall for the year, roughly uh, 1.8, 1.9 percent growth in GDP. So slower than we've seen in the last couple of years, kind of in that you know two percent range though that we've seen really for the last three. Okay, Jan. The last question, and we'll to spend the rest of this interview on this topic. But this whole onshoring or reshoring, we're seeing it in the flooring industry, where jobs are coming back to this country. We've just seen several major announcements that add up to over a hundred million dollars just in floor covering, where people had gone to Asia to source materials. Now they're moving that production back to the U.S. What do you think's causing that? You know, it's not just in flooring. You know, we hear that from really across the the broad spectrum within the manufacturing sector, and I think there there are a number of factors really at play there. I think the first is that manufacturing has become much more lean. You know, we've seen tremendous gains in labor productivity in the sector, and I think that that's helped keep overall unit labor costs pretty low on a relative basis when you look at our costs versus other countries. You know, I guess in layman's terms, that means that our labor is right in the mix. I think with a lot of other countries, especially when you take when you take productivity into consideration. I think you know, when you add into that, though, the other factors that we always hear are, you know, rising costs elsewhere. It's becoming much more expensive you know, in some other countries, particularly China, to produce than it once was. Quality is, has been an issue that we continue to hear about with increasing frequency, and it was easier to monitor quality here domestically than than offshore. Transportation costs are obviously higher, and so that's an, another factor. And then, of course, this doesn't necessarily affect flooring, but certainly. Many manufacturers are benefiting from the increased exploration of, of shale, and that, that certainly has lowered natural gas costs for many manufacturers, and especially you're seeing a lot of investment in those areas where uh, they use natural gas as a feedstock, so it's plastics, chemicals, and, and fertilizers. Do you think that mechanization is also a factor here? I think so, and I, when I, when, when I, certainly when I was talking about productivity, I think that increased investment in technology and innovation, I think, has allowed manufacturers to, to get more from less, and that's, that's really what's coming through, I think, in a lot of those labor productivity figures. All right, so in summary, it's the fact that it's more expensive to, to manufacture overseas than it used to be, energy costs are lower here, mechanization's a factor. What about the value of the dollar? I think the dollar certainly has been a little bit of a factor. I think in general, we've seen the dollar in a kind of an acceptable range. Uh, we've seen the dollar rise here in the last few weeks, particularly with all the fiscal mess that's going on here in Washington. So, you know, we're certainly going to be watching the dollar pretty closely. But, you know, in general, it's been in, in kind of an unacceptable range. I will say one thing with regard to the, the increased investment. You know, certainly I think the U.S. is becoming much more of an attractive location. Uh, but there also are some other things that, that policymakers can do to make it even more attractive, such as the comprehensive tax reform that I mentioned earlier, and, and looking at, at the overall business environment in the U.S. And I think that certainly policymakers should be wise to try to make the U.S. even more attractive. Do you think that the American appetite for wanting to buy American-made goods is a factor? I think to a certain extent it is. I think certainly people would want to buy American whenever they can. I don't think it's the only factor, and I think that the cost and quality are, are also important factors. I think the real driving force, though, are those other factors that I mentioned. Certainly, I think there are a few examples where made in America, I think, has, has gained, some, gained a threshold. But I think in general, the economics matter. I think if you're going to be moving production to the U.S., it's because the economics work. And I think that that's really the overriding factor in the end. Well, Chad, you know, before we go, I do want to mention that you, you put out a report every Monday morning. What do you call it? The Monday, Monday something, right? The Monday Economic Report. So. Yeah. That's very right. well named. <laughs> okay. And to get to get to see it, you just need to go to nam.org, right? That's right. Or you can email me and we can make sure you're added to the list. Okay, Chad. Well, I appreciate you spending time with us and our listeners. Again, been talking to Dr. Chad Mutri, who has a PhD in economics and is the economist with the National Association of Manufacturing. And you've been listening to Kemp Har and FordAily.net.